Greetings everyone. Welcome to Dorsey's Resource. This is a follow-up from the previous video, a couple videos due to a software issue. I wanted to let you guys know, as I mentioned in my most recent video, that there will be a follow-up to what I uh, discussed. The main purpose, the reason why I'm doing this video, I wanted to debunk the uh, myth or rumor that Title 31, Section 3113 gives the government or the IRS or Treasury the right to accept negotiable instruments and uh, discharge them whenever they feel like they want to. I intend to prove uh, in this video to go over where they're violating specific law statutes that pertain to negotiable instruments that were for discharge specifically and not uh, are not gifting securities. So without further ado, uh, check the uh, disclaimer right here. Uh, under fair use, as you guys can see from the screen capture, I won't go over it. But as in general, please keep in mind it's up to everyone to do their own homework and research regarding the matter being discussed. This information is not to be construed as legal advice. In any event, you feel you need to seek a competent professional. I always encourage that you do so at one's own leisure. Dorsey's Resource Channel was not liable or responsible for anyone's misuse of the information. These are simply my opinions and thoughts on the subject matter. Everyone is responsible for their own commercial affairs. Okay, this is what I had happen in uh, one of the previous videos. I'm not going to re-edit this. I'm going to try to continue on. I had a, a lot of notes, uh, so just uh, bear with me. This should be like part two, by the way. Um, so once again, this is a follow-up. Now, I, I wanted to touch on Title 31 of CFR uh, 103.11. Uh, it states, promissory note is defined as a monetary instrument. This is subsection U of the uh, Title 31 of the Code of Federal Regulations. Monetary instruments includes uh, all negotiable instruments. It specifically states, I remember uh, there was someone very knowledgeable that showed me this uh, code, particular uh, statute year, years ago. They since, I believe, in my humble opinion, uh, have tried to hide it when I went to uh, a while ago to pull up this specific statute from a site that lists different laws. I noticed specifically it did not come up like it was intentionally being hidden, by the way. But it states uh, to read this small paragraph, all negotiable instruments, including personal checks, business checks, official bank checks, cashier's checks, third party checks, promissory notes, as that term is defined in the Uniform Commercial Code and money orders that are either in bare form, endorsed without instriction, because uh, you have what's called restrictive endorsements, by the way, made out to a fictitious pay for the purposes of Section 103.2. 23 or otherwise in such form that title thereto passes upon uh, delivery but this specifically says all negotiable instruments well where there's like a gray area uh, by the way is pertaining to where I separate make the distinction there's a particular guru that I mentioned uh, who stated that uh, the IRS or the government can decide when they want to discharge instruments and I want to let you guys know uh, yeah, they have the muscle, the power to do corrupt, fraudulent things like that. But I want to, however, inform the general public and those who are aware of the redemption education, they are uh, egregiously violating uh, different specific statutes. Uh, and this law in Title 31, Section 3113, specifically mentions the administrator of general services in which I'm interpreting is as is related to the GSA bonds, which are different from promissory notes and various types of uh, other negotiable instruments. And this law, the reason I listed, I looked up Title 31 CFR uh, 596.307 monetary instruments, which you guys can see from the screen capture I have listed. It says this law distinguishes the different types of monetary instruments on a side note, the reason why certain types of negotiable instruments are not being processed correctly because they were being mistaken for securities. And this is what Barton Butes mentioned years ago. Those who read uh, the, uh, in the documents uh, that pertain to so-called secure party creditor or redemption education, uh, it says this law properly uh, compartmentalizes the difference, I will say, in language between a negotiable instrument and investment security. Uh, but however, there is a gray area 
uh, I do get, but uh, as you guys can clearly see, uh, this law is different. Now, if you look at, uh, here's a state local statute where Uniform Commercial Code 3-603 is codified at, which I just uh, added down here uh, as some additional notes to reference. Uh, UCC 3-603 is codified in reference to, uh, this is the state statute for Michigan, uh, by the way, and I'll read, uh, as you guys can see from the screen capture, and uh, subsection one, it says, if tender of payment of an obligation to pay an instrument is made to a person entitled to enforce the instrument, the effect of tender is governed by principles of law applicable to tender of payment under a simple contract. Section two, uh, in parentheses, if tender of payment of an obligation to pay an instrument is made to a person entitled to enforce the instrument and the tender is refused, there is discharge ah to the extent of the amount of the tender of the obligation of an endorser or accommodation party having a right of recourse with respect to the obligation to which the tender relates ah that's key i'm going to go back over that again section three it says if tender or payment of an amount due on an instrument is made to a person entitled to enforce the instrument the obligation of the obligor to pay interest after the due date on the amount tendered is discharged you see they have to include the remedy it's the reason why i'm gonna go over that when they created hdr 192 uh this is what i was shown many years ago by a brother uh, who was very advanced when i first started learning about this information many years ago it says, if presentment is required with respect to an instrument and the obligor is able and ready to pay on the due date at every place of payment stated in the instrument, the obligor is deemed to have made tender of payment on the due date to the person entitled to enforce the instrument. So they were basically explaining to me the remedy was uh, located uh, within that law. Uh, by the way, and this is what takes me back uh, briefly to uh, this this website I was able to find, Title 31 CFR 103.11, which in general I tried to look it up. Uh, I was uh, not able to pull it up. One of the law sites specifically appeared as though it was removed. Uh, I'm going to look again to see if there's any other uh, law sites or if I can still pull it up on Cornell specifically. Uh, by the way, but this specifically states, and I know this is actually subsection U because I've read this law in the past. Uh, it's a subsection of the CFR 103.11 that deals with monetary instruments. And it says monetary instruments includes all negotiable instruments. You see, this is key. It says all that specific language. Now, really quick, let's jump to Title 18, Section 8 uh, that states about obligation or other security it says or other security that's separate uh but it states the term obligation or other security of the united states includes all bonds certificates of indebtedness national bank currency federal reserve notes federal reserve bank notes coupons this is the what you have on the presentment when you receive a bill that's like the voucher uh where i pull up a sample right here uh generally in all caps this is not a coincidence you see uh, this is a sample bill that I pulled up the top portion. It's like a voucher. And think about the definition of terminology of a coupon. Uh, as this says, includes all, like the other law that I read. It says, uh, I can go through the list. It says, uh, it further goes on to say, drafts for money drawn upon or by authorized officers of the United States. And some may say you have to have your uh, status changed in order to access this and I want to go over some information that what they're doing is they're intentionally uh, hiding this information. You, you, it does help one out if you do know about the status correction. Some don't understand the distinction. I won't go into that. This deals, deals with some really highly advanced things. But uh, when they created uh, uh, HGR 192, by the way, which let me see if I can pull up. Uh, uh, in this section, uh, this other uh, image that I have is they had to create the remedy within the law. And this is what this individual who was highly advanced went over. I want to relate to the general public. Those of you all who study this information that's asked me in the past 
uh, about what they're doing, uh, why they're giving trouble, people trouble with the negotiable instruments. The Federal Reserve Bank, which is very corrupt, very fraudulent, we know uh, many of their mom and pop banks, for example, such as uh, Huntington Bank, Chase Bank, uh, Bank of America, Fifth Third, uh, Citibank, uh, even credit unions, the list goes on, SunTrust Bank, many, they all fall up under the Federal Reserve Bank, by the way. In case you're not aware, that's why I went over those documentaries. If you haven't had a chance, please watch Money Masters and Monopoly Men and also Ring of Power, Empire of the City. Just type it in on your YouTube search engine, do a Yahoo Google search, maybe even use a private search engine uh, if that doesn't pull it up through DuckDuckGo or whatever. Um, but the reason I'm going over this, this law states every obligation here to or hereafter incurred, whether or not any such provision is contained therein or made with respect thereto, shall be discharged upon payment dollar for dollar and says and any coin or currency which at the time of payment is legal tender for public and private debts. This is important. I'm going to read this again. It says every obligation hereto or hereafter incurred, whether or not any such provision is contained therein or made with respect thereto, shall be discharged upon payment dollar for dollar. And any coin or currency which at the time of payment is legal tender for public and private debts. Now you see how there is a correlation uh, where they had to uh, include the remedy. Uh, by the way, when in this this law, Title 18, Section 8 says includes all bonds. But if we go back to uh, Title 31 of CFR Code of Federal Regulations 10311, subsection U the section that deals with monetary instruments, because I've actually read this law in the past, despite the fact that they tried to hide it. I have a good memory. I know this This is subsection U that deals with monetary instruments. States all negotiable instruments. It says, key word, all negotiable instruments. It doesn't say some. Uh, it says all negotiable instruments, and it, it describes. And it says, as that term, to jump a little bit ahead, as de, uh, is defined in the Uniform Commercial Code. There's some that do reference to Article 9, but there is a law specifically I want to break down. And this is not legal advice, by the way. I did give a disclaimer. It's up to everyone to do their own due diligence, their own homework. But I'm just showing evidence, by the way, for those that study this type of information, uh, that this is very intricate. You have to be meticulous. This is why I'm meticulous sometimes. I know it might seem boring. I apologize if you don't like to listen to my voice or don't like to the patience to follow through my videos. But if you do diligently watch my videos, even previous videos I've done in the past, uh, you will learn things from. It's important to take notes. And this even goes for myself when I'm studying up on material because this information is very meticulous. But I'm uh, going over this. This law was specifically that pertains to the Uniform Commercial Code that's codified and the state uh, statutes of the MCLs, they start with 440. And then see, you would subtract the hyphen instead of UCC 3-603, it would be 44.3603. And this is what the uh, advanced uh, individual went over with me many years ago that I could remember when I woke up to this information from 2004 uh, moving forward. When I, I met the individual around November 2004, uh, moving further into the future, going 05, 06 era. It's how long I've been uh, learning about this type of information. Uh, it specifically states in this subsection, this is also known as subsection B. Uh, and if you look up the uh, the main, you know, the federal version of the Uniform Commercial Code, it states if tender of payment of an obligation to pay an instrument is made to a person entitled to enforce the instrument and the tender is refused, there is discharge. That's where the remedy is at. It says, to the extent of the amount of the tender of the obligation of an endorser or accommodation party having a right of recourse. It specifically states this, having a right of recourse. See, they had to give you redress. They had to provide the remedy. You see, uh, this is where uh, those instruments, while I titled this video, Negotiable Instruments for Discharge are not gifting securities as one individual was trying to argue that when some have uh attempted to use the uh 1099 forms to uh set off debt or get a refund back 
that the IRS or government could decide when they wanted to discharge uh, specifically. I think, in my opinion, I see that that individual, I respect their work. They uh, are using a different process, and I see why they came up with the process that they came up with. However, I wanted to point out on a side note for those that study the reason why secure party creditor information no longer works or people have a hard time uh, with it is because many have not uh, had a, a legal background. A lot of this information dealing with sovereignty, uh, so-called sovereign citizen, uh, which is an umbrella term, by the way, that's used to discredit people. Um, it's really a lot of ill-informed people that have not had a background pertaining to the legal system because this information has been hidden. But I want to demonstrate by doing the screen capture video showing, proving to you all the evidence that a lot of public officials and gatekeepers and those working in the public, sometimes they don't know. They have not been trained in what's called, there's a version of the law specifically that pertains to commercial law by the way, that's related to this type of uh, information. Remember, I did a series a while back uh, earlier in the year where I was showing you guys about business law and how they specifically uh, hiding that uh, they have that for uh, law students or students and colleges. Uh, I was due to take that class uh, coming down the road because I took credits going towards my bachelor's degree, even though I finished with my associates. At some colleges, you can take that course as an elective, but some colleges, it may be required if you uh, are, are under the finance major, uh, securities brokerage field, or you're going into the law because that book is uh, comprises uh, different disciplines. Another reason why uh, this information goes above people's heads. People have never heard of this information or only bits and portions that work in certain professions, uh, such as certain accountants, by the way, uh, is because there's uh, different chapters, by the way, in that particular book that pertain to different uh, areas of study that's important. You know, in this redemption education, you guys are aware there's a lot of uh, different gurus that do webinars and those webinars are important. Uh, they're classes to, to stay abreast, to stay updated for training, just like uh, employees do with their jobs for their careers. Uh, by the way, they're very, 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 very important to stay updated abreast of the changes that have taken place and i that's the reason why i went over the chapters in business law for example some of the chapters i remember offhand a uh, chapter that uh goes over uh bills of exchange by the way which i have uh here's an example of different types of negotiable instruments i just pulled up there's a chapter in business law called commercial paper that deals with negotiable instruments that chapter specifically relates to that uh by the way there uh, years ago, these types of transactions were called, also referred to as bills of exchanges, uh, by the way, that people would utilize once they received the presentment, which is the bill, uh, so-called bill they're using, uh, once again, your credit, they're still in it, uh, by the way. And there's a particular guru I put in my notes. I won't say the name of his YouTube channel. He's a content creator, an uh, influencer who has a uh, uh, following. Uh, who's shown evidence of a check he's gotten back one he showed in the video he did uh for i guess for his wife he redacted the address the information to show they had a refund account on the instrument he had done uh everything properly because once again they hide this information and it's just a dog on shame the irs uh, is colluding with the treasury and the federal reserve and they make this so difficult for people but uh when uh, I uh, attended this event some years ago. Uh, some of you all know uh, I learned high level information, additional information of what I was already uh, researching and some things I had already known about, uh, by the way, uh, how they're hiding this information. But I wanted to give you guys an example. Another cha chapter uh, in business law is also called um, intellectual property that pertains to uh, DBAs. Uh, copyrights, trademarks, and that name speaks for itself. Uh, by the way, when you've done those types of things, those are also various processes that pertain to redemption that helped uh, protect one in the process if you're in the midst of changing your status or prior to uh, correcting one's status. Those are things similar where you don't necessarily have to file a UCC to protect one's status. 
by the way. There's other ways because what I found out, there was a particular researcher some years ago that goes by the name Ken Dost. You can only uh, find maybe a few of his videos still on YouTube, by the way. And uh, there was different people who've come throughout the years similar to investigative journalists and researchers. And what he had uncovered was that the counties uh, were using people's names, the county courts and stuff of residents where they're tapping into these accounts uh, with people not having an idea. He also pointed out when people get a mortgage company, uh, when, when they get a mortgage uh, loan, so-called loan from the bank, that uh, these entities, what they were doing was creating uh, fraudulent uh, trademarks behind the scenes. They were not registering with the actual U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, by the way, when they would steal the check uh, from the person. Because, you know, when you sign that promissory note, you actually funded that contract for the mortgage. That's why some of the uh, legal maneuver that some people would use when they would go to court and fighting for their home was to uh, show uh, proof was was that was that their signature. Well, however, the security instrument was uh, stolen from you. That's the uh, the check similar how to how in college certain people would get refund checks. Sometimes there's a correlation because that uh, instrument, believe it or not, you funded came off your credit, just like on the bills. They're using your credit off your all caps name. That's the lingus in the court system. It's, they use Latin. Uh, that's why your name is not a coincidence. They're trying to be fancy in some instances where they'll put your name in upper and lower case and do different tricks. But that's a form of subterfuge, uh, by the way. This is uh, a particular uh, guru, someone really knowledgeable, pointed out a while ago how they're using a form of subterfuge. You can look up the definition of that terminology. And even in earlier reports that uh, Barton Butes and others did, Dan Benham, that helped write Cracking the Code, uh, spoke of things like this where they're using trickery, uh, subversion uh, when you enter into different types of contracts, by the way. And like I said, to reiterate from earlier, the reason why there's some public officials, in many cases, gatekeepers who are not aware of this information because it pertains to a specific uh, type of teaching they may have never received in law school. Some of this information uh, that deals with common law express trust, I uh, was informed some years ago, are actually only taught at specific college universities. They aren't uh, taught everywhere else. That's why uniformly there's lawyers or judges that are still uh, public or still statutory that only go by uh, what they've been taught or will bend the rules, which in some instances they will be in violation. They will break the laws. They will be in a form of misconduct. They would be violating their own statutes. That's why I wanted to point out you guys have to read the laws and read this information and go over it again and again. Uh, by the way, this is another type of negotiable instrument that I pulled up. But this is uh, kind of to give you guys an idea how they were there were instruments structured a different way where your Social Security number was the account number. Because there is those uh, someone uh, mentioned not too long ago, they tried to say that. The TDA or private account, the secret account doesn't exist I'm here to debunk that uh, there was many individuals, not just myself, uh, when that movement had broke out in 2017 that had contacted Telecheck and had specifically found out from the representative. I myself, I'm telling the actual true story, uh, told me I had two different accounts at the time. One account was with the uh, Treasury. Uh, had a name under uh, the Bureau of Public Debt, but also would come up uh, as the Treasury when you would try to link the account uh, on Amazon, by the way. And there were there was a successful process that was working on PayPal before PayPal removed it. I have the evidence on that, by the way, and I've sent that to some people, uh, by the way, privately uh, a while ago just to show evidence, uh, by the way, that there was a process that was working. I don't know. Uh, I can't say what uh, if they've updated uh, that process with the new loophole might be because uh, the elites, they use different uh, types of loopholes, as you know, of course. So I can't say uh, I'm not in the loop as far as that high up. But we do know for a fact there was a process that people were using through PayPal where they were linking 
their secret account or private account and they were drawing money down there was one guy who showed this when i caught this information at the time and they had youtube had totally removed his uh, whole entire channel so this was like a big uh, agenda coming from real high up uh this appears to be from very powerful people who were attempting to cover this up there was a that's why i did a video in the past where i titled the massive uh cover up uh by the way which is a form of subterfuge now i'll read this other uh document this image that i have pulled up where it says this is a promissory note it is a promise to pay at some point in the future when you use one of these to purchase goods all you are doing is exchanging a debt with more debt like there's a saying you cannot pay a debt with the debt so I try to remember to use uh, the terminology Federal Reserve note or currency because legally this is not money. These bills, these notes are also copywritten, uh, by the way. As you see, the name of the Federal Reserve is printed on there. Uh, it's important why you go over those documentaries uh, that I went over. I'll mention again, Money Masters, Monopoly Men, and uh, Ring of Power, Empire of the City. I mentioned them in a previous video that I've done and in many videos in the past. If you can still find those documentaries, you still may be able to find them on YouTube. You can watch them for free if you do have the money or the funds, which is not a lot, not very expensive. Go ahead and purchase it. Uh, uh, share it with your friends or other like minded people. They will help uh, really break down in more intricate details and show evidence of what I'm going over because this information is complex. This is intricate. You have to follow uh, where I'm coming from. It's the reason why I'm very meticulous. And even when I present these videos, the two most recent videos, by the way, I had trouble issue with the software, guys, just on a side note, just to let you know. So this is like the uh, third attempt. I'm redoing one uh, video. I successfully edited. So this may be like part two, by the way. But it says the banks that issue these promissory notes charge interest for doing so. This is part of fractional reserve banking which you pay for with your income tax essentially your labor is used as collateral on the debt the government owes the banks for lending them uh their notes and by pumping this fake money into the economy it creates inflation which devalues your spending power that's why i pulled up uh the uh, national debt clock which is over uh 28 trillion on this web browser this section breaks down debt per citizen over eighty five thousand. and if you scroll near the bottom there's a section in the lower right hand corner that shows liability per citizen by the way so uh as i read from this image right here i thought that this was good material uh for you guys i'll go over it again that the federal reserve notes that we carry in our pocket that many times we call money that's a physical representation of the digital form that's in your account Keep in mind, uh, someone who was highly advanced many years ago informed me that uh, these negotiable instruments, by the way, that were being uh, refused, made out similar, or there were other various versions, similar to checks and money orders, are still drawn off of uh, negotiable instruments, by the way. He stated to me at the time, think about it, still like many years ago, they used to send uh, people's checks back when people will write personal checks for their bank account because what's happening similar to your bills these uh so-called debt collectors and multi uh transnational super conglomerate corporations are double dipping and triple dipping because they're turning your instrument your security instrument into a derivative by the way uh by the way your your checks uh the banks used to send them back now they even though they they're digital they still digitize them like you know when you deposit a check uh in like the super atm machines they'll show you an image but behind the scenes they're uh if you heard pastor lindsey williams for example in the past talk about the derivatives market i was informed privately by a private source that i have that they're turning these instruments uh and they're double dipping because they these instruments are already prepaid for uh they where they're using your credit but they're not showing you how to claim that back and you're not supposed to necessarily be a common law express trust uh you you don't have to be uh llc this individual show where he used his in lingus and had the proper forms and was able to tap in and receive a refund 
uh, for his account. This is to show, kind of demonstrate, there was various ways to access uh, your secret accounts that some may call. And once again, there was one particular guru that tried to argue that you don't have a secret account. And I want to debunk the myth by telling the actual story and that many other people have confirmed on their own is that when I contacted Telecheck some years ago, the representative had confirmed that I had two different accounts. One account was with the Federal Reserve and it had a different routing number than an account with the Treasury. And she went as far as to state that that type of account had a particular functionality. Like, you know, for example, how uh, if you have already a regular bank account on the public statutory side, by the way, and how you're able to do different things where you can go in in person and do a bank wire, domestic wire, that's a particular type of banking transaction, or you can do ACH, uh, that's automated clearinghouse, or some may have it set up for direct deposit or bill pay. Those type of accounts have different types of functionality. So the representative from Telecheck went as far as to mention to me, this is to show proof. She gave me a number to contact the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, which at the time I uh, tried this throughout the different years just to confirm this is true, uh, by the way. And you can download uh, phone recording apps, by the way, to provide the evidence for your own personal reference. Because I didn't want to, uh, at the time, I didn't think of it. I didn't want to upload, you know, of course, information pertaining to my uh, SSN number. But she didn't know at the time, the representative. But when she, when I went over the numbers and I told her that account number was my uh, SSN number, by the way. And keep in mind, on the older uh, Social Security cards that used to have account number, uh, it was state right under the uh, copy, the image. They removed that many years later, which you obviously can see that was done intentionally, uh, by the way, to hide this information, by the way, to keep this uh, hidden. And see, when they brought us into bankruptcy, which House Joint Resolution 192, which I read earlier, is codified in the statutes at large, 73rd Congress, uh, first session, chapter 4848. Uh, section 112, this is another way to find the law, states every obligation is contained therein or made with respect thereto shall be discharged upon payment dollar for dollar in any coin. It says any, doesn't specifically say a specific type, but it says any coin or currency which at the time of payment is legal tender for public and private debts. Now, if we jump back again, as I already went over, they, they uh, put the remedy in uh, Uniform Commercial Code 3-603, which is codified pursuant in reference to the state statute, if tender or payment of an obligation to pay an instrument is made to a person entitled to enforce the instrument, and it says, and the tender is refused, that's if the merchant refused your instrument, your negotiable instrument. It states specifically in this law, there is discharge, specifically states, that's where the remedy's at. Then another part, without reading this whole uh, paragraph again, it says the endorser or accommodation party having a right of recourse. That's where the remedy is. It says with respect to the obligation to which the tender relates. Specifically, notice the terminology has all similar to uh, this law title 18, section 8. It says includes all bond certificates of indebtedness. Then we go back to title 31 of CFR 103.11. Uh, by the way, and there are some other uh, laws that reference to when they took us off the gold standard, by the way, uh, and that actually happened back then. Uh, there's another document, I don't know where it's at offhand, that shows that uh, goes over where Congress had a session that says the American people back the currency, uh, by the way. Um, since I don't, I don't have that document offhand, maybe down the road it would have gone well with this video. But there was an individual that I know that did a seminar, I believe it was in Atlanta some years ago, a private event. And he told the people at the seminar, it was just the audio that was recorded. And he told them that you back the currency. I won't say the individual described who they are. Some of you all might know or could read between the lines who the individual may be. And it sounds like from listening to the audio, the crowd was very shocked and hearing this uh, profound information at the time. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, still stay subscribed with me. Those out there that still rock with me, rock with Dorsey's Resource. If you want to follow me, you can follow me 
at Dorsey's Resource on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, should be in the description box, different social media. I'm on uh, Minds.com, of course, in case anything happened. I, I do have an account on Rumble and Brighteon.com, by the way. That's just on standby because you guys know of all the censorship, which I've spoken about. But I want to do a comprehensive video and go over uh, specifically in relation to why I wanted to debunk why Title 31, Section 3113 does not give the government or the IRS, the Treasury, the right to uh, discharge or offset payments whenever they feel like it. Uh, no. And I think that law specifically, from if you read it, pertains to uh, registered securities, by the way, that uh, this is not uh, in relation to the... Uh, Th these types of other various types of negotiable instruments. There's a distinction, and I went over already how that law in Title 31 uh, makes that distinction between the, lang the language, by the way. That's the reason why I'm doing this follow-up video. This is unofficially like a part two, by the way. So with that being said, before I shut things down, I'm going to leave you guys with these cliches. Real legends never die. They live in our hearts forever. Stay woke. Uh, until next time, Ashe, Inshallah, Shalom, peace, I'm out. Deuces.